Hello, welcome to topic six, study guide. I've already done all these solutions and I'm just gonna very quickly run through this. So I would recommend pausing, rewinding, whatever you need to do. So here we go. What, should I go through every question? I don't know, just click the solutions. We want uh, apples, two bananas. We don't get the number of bananas, but we get the number of total. So there's 21 total. So nine plus 12 is 21. So that must means there are nine bananas. So the apples to bananas ratio would be nine to 12. And that reduces by a factor of three for three to four. Next one, this is the problem where suppose you want to take these sides or anything, it could be a sum of money, it could be anything. And you wanna divide it in a way that it's not equally divided. It's divided in a ratio of three to two to five. So what you do is you set up a picture. You don't even have to set up a picture if you understand what's happening really. And you're gonna not divide 150 into three parts. You're gonna divide it actually into 10 parts. And then the 10 parts gets distributed in a certain way. Two parts to this side, three parts to this side, five parts to this side. Answer the question. The question is the largest. The largest part will be the five X's, which is 75 feet total. Okay. Number three, we get a scale factor of one to 36. <clears throat> it's a one to 36 scale factor. There's no units here and that's okay. Now we know that the model truck is eight inches. So that would be the smaller one. So like one is smaller than 36. The model is gonna be smaller than the real thing. So I'm gonna put eight on top, understanding that eight is the small one. Small over large, small over large. Cross multiply and divide. And we divide by one. So it's really just cross multiply. You get 288 inches, divide it. There will be inches because you have inches on top, so you're gonna get inches on bottom. You get inches divided by 12 if you wanna get feet. Number four, we just have to make sure that you cross multiply and get J times M. J times M, check. J times K, that's not a correct multi cross multiplication. That's why I put those M. J times M, J times M. There we go. Next, we're looking at defective bulbs, uh, the ratio of defective to total. So they tell us that two were defective in a sample of 30. How many defective in a sample of 450? Set up my proportion. I did defective over total, defective over total, defective over total, cross multiply and divide by 30 to get your answer. Six is all about matching up. For example, I can match up ND to JL. That's the first two to the first two. And then we've got DK to LB. That's the last two to the last two. Now that makes a nice little pattern. Also, you could write this like this though. A and B are basically the same thing. It's the first two to the last two equals the first two to the last two. First two to the last two, first two to the last two. That one checks out. This one is not check out. This one, if you look into it, uh, D, uh, JL does not match up with JB or DK does not match up with JB. It just doesn't match up. There's not a pattern happening with this one. Number seven. <clears throat> The rectangles are similar. So I'm gonna set up two similar looking rectangles. The larger one is a length of eight and a width of four. The smaller one has a width of three. Make sure you put the widths together. Length, width, length, width. And I matched up my lengths. Now, the perimeter of this one is easy. If you know that that's four and that's four and that's eight and that's eight and that's a rectangle, the perimeters of that one's easy. Now the perimeter of this one, we don't know because we don't know what the sides are. So you could 
find out the side lengths. You could set up, you could call this x and set up a proportion with four is to eight, for example, as three is to six, right? And then we could easily, we could easily just add up the sides and make the perimeter of the small one. That's one way to do it. And it's 18. 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 is 18. Or maybe, maybe even more easier, set up a ratio of the perimeters. 4 is to 3 as the perimeter of this one is to the perimeter of this one. 4 to 3 is the perimeter of that one. You're going to get 18 either way you go. Down here, determine if similar, there has to, they have to meet the two criteria to be similar. Angles have to be congruent, and the sides have to be proportional. So in this problem, because they are parallelograms, this would have to be 100, this would have to be 80, this would have to be 80, and ditto here and here and here. Okay, so angles, check. Are the sides proportional? Well, I can easily check this one. Uh, you could do 4 to 16, and that way it'd be 4 times 4 is 16. 8 times 4 is not 24. These are not proportional. Not proportional. It doesn't meet the second criteria. This one does. 20 to 24 is the same as 35 to 42. You can easily check that proportion by just cross multiplying and it'll be the same. Next one, it says find the scale factor, make sure you're careful, small to large, small to large, match them up. You could have done 12 and 18 as well. You would have gotten the same thing, 12, 12 to 18. They both divide by six. 2 to 3, 2 to 3, either way you're going to get the same thing. There. Number 10, you could set up a nice picture for this, but you don't have to. As long as you establish a ratio, I'm establishing height to shadow. Height to shadow, I'm going to continue height to shadow. 5 foot height, 44 inch shadow. X height. 44 foot shadow. Now that is a problem. I'm going to convert this to this. So instead of doing 5 is to 44 inches, I'm going to do 5 is to 3.6 feet. How do you convert to feet? You divide by 12. 44 divided by 12. Now I'm going to cross multiply and divide. Cross multiply, divide, it's 60 feet. If you didn't change that, you would get something just ridiculous. All right, number 11. Um, match everything up. This one was hard to match up, so I looked for the angle, like that nice acute angle there. And then like this one had to match up with this one because it's connected to the obtuse angle. So I looked at the obtuse to the acute, so obtuse, that, those have to match up, these have to match up to the flat parts. Set up your proportion, 7x minus 8 is to 40, as 36 is to 30. Cross multiply, here I showed it, I showed it, cross multiply, and cross multiply. Distribute, don't forget to distribute to get that. And then from there, add and divide, and you're gonna get eight. This one, you know what, I saw a, I saw a pattern. So I didn't need to do the proportion thing because I saw a pattern. Divide by two, divide by two. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? I did that wrong. I went backwards. Yikes. Okay, shh, don't tell anybody. To get from 
To get from the small one to the large one, I have to multiply by two. Oh boy. So to get from the small one to the large one, I have to multiply by two. That should be equal to 24, not six. I went the wrong way. That should be equal to 24. Pull. So disappointed in myself. So in that case, we will subtract and we will divide, get seven. All right, don't tell anybody I made a mistake. Next, it does help that we do get the statement. So if you're struggling with matching things up, know that MH would match up with HG. Okay, so I circled them. So then I can make a nice proportion. 36 is to 99 as X plus 20 is to 88. Cross multiply, don't forget to distribute the 99. 99 times X plus 99 times 20. Work it out from there, you can get X equals 12. All right, next ones, um, just look at the answers, match things up. Look at this beautiful Z right here with the parallel lines. Those have to match up. So the, the V and the F match up. You can see that. So let's look at the answers. 16, they give us the ratio, five to six. So I'm setting up a ratio of five to six. They give us A to B. So I have to make sure I do A over B, A over B times eight, times eight. X has to be 40. That page. Next one. Careful. This one, three times five is 15. Eight times five is 40. It has to be 40. Or you could set up a proportion and you'd be all set. These, this set is tricky because you have to make sure that you Get the proportion just right. This one, not so bad. I can see highlighted there. I went, I went green is to red as green is to red. Eight is to 24 as nine is to X. 19, and I'm assuming that you can solve the proportion from there. Don't forget to distribute when you do your cross multiplication. So again, I went, this one I went Red is to green. No, sorry, I went green is to red again. I went green, so this little piece here. Now this 16, that's really annoying. That's this one. That piece is 16. This little piece here is X plus six, T to E. So I went that one to 21, and then I did eight is to 12. Green is to red. Down here, um, because the lines are parallel, you can make proportions. You can just use the pieces and that's fine. So I did red is to green on this side and red is to green on this side. Yeah, I had to find that 12. I didn't use 32, 12, 20 is to 12. And then 21, same idea. I found this five first and I did Red is to green, that's this piece to the whole length, and then red is to green, which is this piece, and the whole length is 18. There's my proportion there. Uh, same idea here, just make sure you are matching some stuff up. For example, on B, let's do B together. I did The red is to green. So if we're doing B here, um, GC, red is to green, as GD, red is to green. So I made sure I matched everything up. So GC was the, had to be the answer. 23 is one of the most missed problems on this test every year.
Let's go through it. I've highlighted everything already. All right, first we're gonna label what we have. We have A to B is seven. Now, A to B, this length here has a relationship with this length here. Do you know what the relationship is? Hopefully. This length is half of this whole length. In fact, these are all the same. Seven, seven, and seven. Seven, seven, seven. Total length of 14. We can go ahead and answer the first one. QS is 14 and CS is seven. Seven, seven, seven. What else lengthwise? We get that QR 17.2. That's why I labeled Q to R. Now Q to R has a relationship with this one. Again, it is half. Look at that beautiful relationship. Okay. So if this is 17.2, this whole yellow length, then this little yellow length is half of 17.2, which is 8.6. Next are the angles. We are given that this angle is 91. So a couple things. Not only are these things half, but they are also parallel. The green lines are parallel, the yellow lines are parallel, which makes this a parallelogram and opposite angles of a parallelogram are the same. So I can bring this 91 over here, and then I can make a Z because of the parallel. I got a Z right here, and yeah. And also, this one's 91 if we really wanted to look at it because there's another Z. There's a Z. Anyway, the answers are both 91. Backside. Did go over these in class. Um, just be very careful on how you match things up. I matched up the right angle, I separated them out. I got a red triangle, I got a green triangle, I got a purple triangle. I got a red right angle, I got a green right angle, and I got a purple right angle. I got a red short leg, a green short leg, and a purple short leg. Next one. You need to take the triangle, separate it into three counterparts, and correspond the parts together. So I got a hypotenuse, 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 a right angle, a right angle, a right angle, a short leg, a short leg, a short leg, a long leg, a long leg, a long leg. Once I have that going, then I start looking for proportions, like for my X's. Um, X, X over 12 is the same as three over X. I want to isolate the X's. I don't want to involve Y's or Z's. And there's only one way to do that. X over 12, three over X. That ended up being a nice six. You can see the rest, pause the video if you need to. Um, 26 was all about matching. The five matched up with the two X minus one. The three matched up with the six. And I got it all from right here. That's how I matched. And when I matched up the three with the six, I saw a double relationship. So three times two is six, five times two is 10. So we have to multiply times two and you have to multiply times two. Don't set them equal, you have to multiply by two. Then it's really easy, two X minus one equals 10. All right, there's the rest of the answers. Um, good luck with your studies.